going back to <laughs> Jewel. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got we got a pump here, right? Dump here, basically coming back to where it started. So um, you could assume that this is still then in its corrective phase, right? Um, this did look like it was potentially gearing up for another leg to the upside, but it came down here essentially saying it's probably right. Um, I mean, you could you could argue this is a wave one, two, right? If two doesn't go below the beginning of one, it's still technically intact and we could get then a wave three coming after that. But it just looks to me right now that it's still just, you know, kind of finding its fair value. A lot of people are still happy to sell it. So because of that, right, um, if you do take this last up move and you were to take a fib retracement on it, just a super simple one, right? Uh, we did go below this 0.786, which is usually the last support level before uh, on a retracement before you basically uh, neutralize the previous uptrend. So the uptrend is no longer intact and we are now in a, another downtrend here for Jewel. Um, doesn't mean, right, we have to continue in a downtrend. We could stop that downtrend at any time, depending on obviously what's happening with the game uh, and the platform. But um, I would say I wouldn't be surprised if it went below $4, but I kind of would be. There's The part of me that wouldn't be is, um, in terms of the just looking at the chart, like, yeah, it can continue to go down and find new lows. I mean, that's basically what it did right here. It came down, popped up a bit, right, and then came down and find found new lows. I don't think you get anything this severe, right? I think if you get new lows, it's not very far below $4, uh, and I would scoop that up like crazy. Um, but, yeah, I would say, <clears throat> you know, if we, if we start – seeing some momentum to the upside what you want to watch for is this 10 day moving average if we start catching like three four five days closing above that area then the lows could be in so uh either way you slice it right the apy uh and uh, emissions on jewel uh and everything in that uh, dfk space is so nice that we don't really care about the price all that much uh, because we know at some point it will come back right towards the 20 plus dollar region um and so, you know, grabbing it here, you know, down at $4, $5, $2, $3, dollars, whatever it is, is good. Yeah, give me one. Let me, let me try to pull up the current lock unlock rate. But I think currently right now the unlock rate for Crystal is about 9%. And the current lock unlock rate for Jewel is pretty high right now. Let me, let me double check. Mm. It is, damn, okay, 73% unlocked. So basically, damn, well, damn near all of it, but it pretty much unlocks. And so, so those yields are really, really juicy on Serendale. And you're starting to get sort of um, people. I think we are going to get sort of we're going to start getting sort of a breakout um, at some point within the next two, three weeks on Jewel because the APRs are starting to go down on Jewel because more and more people are starting to stack up more Jewel right now into Jewel Phantom, Jewel Luna, and then Jewel One because those APRs were 400 percent APRs. Or they're now they're in the 360 range. So how do you, how do you feel about the price depending on the market? Obviously, when we get towards Epoch Fifty One on Jewel in July, that is really really interesting. Um, hmm. A lot of factors involved, of course. Yeah, that's a lot of factors. I'm I'm kind of guesstimating that. Damn, that is a good question, actually. Because if we do what I was thinking based on that chart, you know, without the, the the fundamental side of it, right? If it does pump up and get past, you know, 11 bucks, like it can go real good. So, um, you know, because it would still be in that impulsive type pattern potentially. So I'm just trying to think, okay, what would be a narrative? What would be, you know, one narrative I can think of is the July uh, Epoch 51 where things start coming unlocked. But then at the same time, that's a, that's a, it's a narrative to pump a bit, but it's, you know, people will be dumping as well. So it's kind of like, you know, how much, you know, is there more yeah. supply or demand? I would think until September, there's going to be more, there's not going to be an, as much demand as, you know, it doesn't seem like there'll be a lot of demand for a nice, like pump to new all time highs or anything like that. But once it does go to new all time highs, I think Jewel's going to get uh, on a pretty good ride. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I'm kind of suspect, I mean, my, my ultimate like, sus like kind of suspicion about what's going to happen is, they're more than likely when the when the epoch's over and stuff like that. I think the way they kind of stop, you know, the downward pressure or at least help it out is with you know the Coinbase listing that they they essentially have in the back pocket with Crystal. I mean, with yeah. Jewel. I'm sorry, with Jewel. I mean, when you look at something like Spell, though, so I mean, Spell is in a uh, counter trend to a downtrend. It was popping up a bit, and the Coinbase listing on Spell helped it for maybe five days. Yeah. Right. And then you know Coinbase. 
Coinbase listings get sold off quicker um, these days because they they've been putting so many coins on their platform, right? right. Which is 